Now to bring about change in a herd of wild deer, it's not so much about changing the deer themselves as it is about changing the attitude of the people. Because if the people want something done, the power is with the people. We can achieve anything if we work together. There's a desire that is embedded in the hearts of men and women that hunt for a lovely trophy stag. It doesn't mean that's the sole reason that they go out to do something. Well, you can go out to get venison for your family and you can shoot an animal that's got a great rack uh, on it as well. So there's a lot of respect goes in there and there's a lot of satisfaction in getting that as well. It doesn't have to be one or the other. But if an animal has got a good quality trophy head or if there's even the chance of getting that one day in an area, it drives people. It will make somebody climb to the top of the highest hill around here where they wouldn't do that if it was just going up there to have a look at a wallaby or a possum. So a well-managed, good quality herd of deer, in my opinion at least, is worth far more to um, the environment, far more as an environmental tool than just ones that are a mixture of good and bad. For over 30 years now, I've been working closely with a group known as RIDGE, Research into Deer Genetics and Environment. Our stated aim in our constitution was to bring about a management system for wild deer that suited this country, in cooperation with hunters, landowners and government. We wanted to see a win-win situation for all. One thing that a lot of people don't realise is the majority of wild deer in Australia live on country that is already dramatically altered by farming practices over the last couple of hundred years. It could be argued that wild deer have now got as much right to be here as we have. There's an old saying here, if it pays, it stays. This is exactly what Ridge has tried to do. We've tried to show people what's possible and bring them with us on this journey. What you see now is an example of Skunk and I going out and taking a cull stag for venison. Now we call them a cull or a management stag and this raises the hackles on some people. They say you shouldn't call them that. But when you, in our terminology, if you cull a herd, you're actually removing uh, the animals that you want the least in that herd. That's exactly what we're doing. We've put a line in the sand and we've said, right, anything that doesn't come up to that standard should be taken for venison. These ones, we should leave them go through. And by doing so, what we're seeing is an a increase in the overall quality, the overall health of these herds. This guy. Look at this guy. Where's the other one? It's a beautiful soft afternoon. I'm here in a burnt out scrub in the back corner of one of our landowners' properties. I've got two big stags straight across here, just feeding out in the rain. So what I'm going to do is see if there's either of one, either of them are a cull. And we'll take it for meat. I think so far they look pretty good. I think they're both ones I'll leave, but they might have some more friends. No, he's too good. Yeah, there's two of them. That's the second one. The bottom one has got good brow, good bay, good clay. 
Just a couple of inches past his trays, but he's already swelling out like he's going to go at least a five. The other guy's got good brows, droopy brain, bays. He's got trays and he's thickening too, so I reckon he's going to be double fives or sixes. Yeah, a couple of nice stags in that uh, mob there. It's probably a cull stag as well, so um, let's get a bit closer. Yeah, nice style in his lower tines. Too good to shoot. Well, that's a young two-year-old up on the spur. You can see his slim body. There's one. Missing bay. Missing tray. No excuses. There's at least two two-year-olds there. You can see their short jaw length. They haven't developed properly yet. I can hear some noise here in the gully below me. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this big old thug. Look at him. Check out the size of his body first, then compare his head size. He has a very long jawline, his mandible has grown way past his last molar teeth. It's also very deep, giving him the look of having a curved jawline at the bottom. The big broad back has a thick shoulders, a deep gut line. Now we can compare his antlers. He's got big brows that droop down and hook back up. He's got good brow, bay and tray. One big top and one smaller. Maybe that's due to age. Overall, he'll make a good trophy for somebody this season. Here's the one I want. Missing bay and tray. Let's put a 3086 behind his shoulder so we don't wreck too much meat. That is my favourite style of hunting. Um, I've come out here, rainy afternoon, and uh, just hunted around some of this sort of edge of the scrub country on the edge of the cattle country. And uh, yeah, located the mob of velvet stags. I've looked through them. We've got a couple of two-year-olds in there, a couple of lovely young two-year-olds. Probably got a three-year-old. He's got a brow bay and hitting his trays. And uh, we've got this big thug down the gully down here. He's, he's a big five, but he looks old, old as Methuselah, but beautiful old head. And then we've got uh, the two stags over there that we saw right for a start. They both look like they're gonna go to, you know, at least double fives, at least 10 pointers, maybe 11, 12 pointers. Um, yeah, and then a couple of young two-year-olds there good form, good shape, and one guy in amongst it, he's got little brows, missing the bay one side, I think he's got a little bay the other, he looks like he might have a little top on him, but he looks like he'll probably go to, he would have gone to like a double three, two three, something like that. What's his excuse? The feed is fantastic this year. All the other ones are throwing good style, he's got plenty of age, I reckon he looks like a, I don't think he's over six, but I think he's probably a four or five year old stag. And uh, yeah, we've got tons of stags. We might as well take out the ones that can't perform in this country and leave the ones that can. Let's go and have a look at him. Mulberry leaf stingers, itchy jack. <laughs> it's horrible country. Beautiful, horrible country. That's what it is. More gimpy gimpy.
Good boy. Good boy. Here we are. We'll bone this one out and get going before dark. Yeah, little brow, little bay, no bay there. Looks like he's going to very little up, up here, if anything. Cull stag. <laughs>